Now, if we were to use that idea of negative painting and focusing on all the area and the lines in between, just like we did from Max the Cat and applied it into a zebra, we'd have a really wonderful design. But what if we decided to change this a little bit like we did with the tiger? And instead of just using that one color, what if we used multiple colors and just filled those areas in with water and drop the color in and let the magic happen? Now, why this is important is if you are too dry with your pigments, it's not going to move. This is going to teach you about your water to color ratio. Besides, it's really pretty and a lot of fun. So let's get started. Let's look at it. I'm going to start with my large shapes, the ears, and then work my way down to the details, I think last, and we'll get started. Okay, I'm working on dry paper. And I'm thinking, is this the color that I want to use? I think so. And as I get down here, maybe I'll give it some little hairs just by brushing back. And what I could do is take maybe a little purple. Take a little purple and drop that in. Let's go ahead. I'm going to try to put even a little magenta into that little, little tiny hairs. Let the color run just for fun. I like our teal green, so I'm mingling. I'm mingling a lot of different colors in here. I just want to see what happens. Just drop in a little bit of color. Take your time. I think I like that uh, purple. And I intentionally wanted to stay with those teals, so let's see if I can stay with that. Let's go from the outside. That's a little dry. Get a bit more water in there so it can move. You're going to get a little lost. I know that's the big fuzzy ear. That's the part that comes down. That's that spot. This should be white. I think this area has the color. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and make that have the color. I was going to do the, the yellow, but that magenta is pretty neat. So I'm going to bring the magenta down, just like that. Maybe get more of that magenta down here. I'm trying to leave a white space in between. What if I go to the yellow? Is that going to look all right? I think that's kind of nice too. The yellow. Thinking what would be nice with the yellow? Maybe the, that magenta. It's like a rainbow. Maybe clean that up and maybe start with our magenta on the top. Let's see that. I'm leaving that white space in between. So I need to come down here. Maybe I'll switch to the yellow as we come down here. I wanted to go into the purples, but that's kind of interesting. What about if we take a blue? Put that in there. I've got all that different mingling going on. Just play with your color. More of the purples. So actually what I'm trying to do is have maybe two or three colors within one. I had three in there that got a little muddy. What about if we take that blue down here? Let's 
just like that. And the yellow next to that is going to look a little muddy. It could easily. Ooh, let's see. It's nice that it goes into the green. I like that. So I'll bring that up to about here. Okay, that's looking all right. And I almost kept on going, but I think that's fine. Then down here, I'll take that yellow, fill that in. Take some of that purple. So I'm trying to either come down with one color, one like the purple, and then maybe in the middle, change it and let it run into the other color. And maybe add the little bit of the yellow to turn it into a lighter green. Just try not to put too many different colors in there. And I'll put maybe a purple down here. Okay, I like all that fun stuff that's going on here. And then I need to try to go up into that area. So what I could do is turn my paper a little bit so I can access those lines a little bit better. And that way I'm not really seeing it as a zebra. I'm just looking at lines. And let's continue on over here. I get to look at the pattern of my color to see if I like it. Hey, I'll start with a lighter yellow over here. Oh, the blue. Why not the blue? Let's do the blue. That way that'll move. So I'm trying to stagger them. That means have different colors side by side. And I'm trying to have two colors within one just to make it interesting. Let's go up here. Now, I wasn't really using that color. I'm trying to, I, I just selected a few colors and what I don't want to do is try to shift it to too many different colors. Try to stay with what I have. And just try to stay within just some lines. You can easily get confused. So all I'm really thinking about is leaving a white space in between all of my uh, colored lines and also changing the stroke. Now I see that I'm going more for the purples and the blues over here. So what I should do is get more of those yellow greens in there. This is looking a little hard to me. So I'm going to soften up some of those lines just a little bit. Let's get some of those yellow greens in. And if it helps, you might need to just uh, go uh, stagger it a little bit. All right, and then it's going to be easier for me to see it this way, I think. A little harder for me to paint, but then I can see where I'm going. Because all of these are basically just one little line. We're just going to drop a little color in there. And maybe add a combination of the yellow and the blue a little bit here and there. So we break it up and that it looks like it's part of the rest of our painting. And a little bit along the pencil line so we can see them. Maybe I'll bring in more of our, I like that, that magenta and the yellow. So let's see, we've got our eye there. Take 
Take your time. I got a little big. Trying to play with the stroke a little bit. And I'm thinking about the eye. So I'm using the very, very tip of the brush. Okay, so I'm going to go around it up to the pencil line. I'm thinking I don't want to go too dark and I want to leave a little white shine if I can. Just take the very tip of the brush and I might need to uh, come back in with a little white paint if I want more of that shine in there. There, bring that down. Let's mingle those colors and let them run together. Press a little harder on my brush so I get the control and add a bit of that yellow. We've got a lot of fun colors in here. Maybe clean that line up with, with the darker color. Maybe a little yellow over there. Okay, then we're coming down into the nose. Maybe a little blue on that. And then let's connect it. I'm trying to think of what color I want to do with the nose. That darker blue. I should be careful not to go too dark too fast. Let's see what color combination. I like that purple. How about if we go in that purple? I want this to stand out, but uh, I also like so much of what's going on over there. There, we'll just bring that up. Thinking about the nostril and around the mouth. So now he's starting to stand out. We can always go darker with those things there. That blue is kind of nice. I like that green. How about the magenta? Is that going to work? Yeah, I think the magenta works. Let's find his lips. Around the nose. And we still have a few more of these lines to put in. I'm getting lost. So instead of worrying about where am I and just try to paint what you can see. And with the nostril, it would be better if it was darker. Okay, I'm going to mingle this up because I'm not exactly sure where to go. Thinking, do I want it to be that dark there on the nose? Or how about if I take uh, maybe... If I put the yellow in there, why not? Let's, I'll find out very quickly. If I take that yellow in there, it'll tone it down a little bit, and that way it's not going to stand out too much. It should mingle. And let's connect these lines. And I think I'll try to break this up a little bit there. Maybe I'll take some of that yellow. 
probably not a good idea because of that purple, but we're going to do it. I'm going to bring that down. And I think I'm going to look for a yellow and a teal. So let's take our yellow and move it this way. And then our green. Let it find the edge and path through the water. And maybe even a little bit there. So I'm just touching the paper. And down here, I'm looking at my purples. Wonder, can I take some of that teal? Those blues and bring it down. And if we touch a little bit of the bottom, And we have our zebra. Now I could come back over here and touch, uh, add more color, but I think we're good. And to clean up some of those lines, maybe I'll just, just touch a spot here and there to continue the line of maybe the ear. Just touch it. And this one here, maybe just the, something like that, maybe just the top, and that's it. I'm just going to add a little bit more color in the eye and call them done. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you learned something new and challenged yourself and had a great time. So until next time, have fun and happy painting.